In the December of 1980, miners from Kusarhei Kori went out to notify the locals about upcoming demolitions, but they not expected to find Habe was the body of their late co-worker hanging from the ceiling of a wine cellar. The young man was Josef Schumeg, a soldier on the leave from his military service. The police conducted a quick investigation and found it to be suicide. The case was closed, but Schumeg's father could not believe that his son would do such things to himself. In 1990, he asked the Hungarian office of the Prosecutor General to revisit the mysterious circumstances of the suicide. In the very same year, a silver collection appeared in New York, sold by the Sotheby Auction House, dating back to the late Roman era. The collection consisted of 14 silver objects and a large bronze cauldron. It was named as the Souso Treasure, after its presumed owner, since the lines May these, O Souso, yours for many ages be. Small vessels, fit to serve your offspring worthily, can be read on one of the plates. Souso himself was an immensely wealthy Roman citizen who may have had connections with the royal court, since the Situaris bells were very reminiscent of the diadems of emperors. He was most likely a Christian, for a Christogram can be seen in a central location on the plate dedicated to him. The collection can be sorted into two categories based on their styles. One group is made up by geometric objects decorated with niello. These adornments were used from the end of the 1st century to the second half of the 4th, mainly in the western parts of the Roman Empire. The other group carries the characteristics of the eastern provinces with their embossed human figures used from the Hellenic times until the early Byzantine period. Researchers couldn't deduce the exact workshop or workshops where the artifacts originate from, but they could date the treasure. They were made in the 4th century at different times, and the scratches and abrasions found on their surface indicates that most of them were in use for decades until the late 4th or early 5th century, when Souso or one of his descendants buried it, presumably because of a hostile invasion. But to where exactly? To find out, we have to jump back to Hungary. After the case of Schimberg was reopened, Béla Vukan took the lead of the detective work. Upon revisiting the evidence and questioning more witnesses, he came to a somber conclusion. As it turns out, the young Schimberg was an amateur antique collector, and during his work in the quarry, which was also used in the Roman era, found a large treasure. He was proud of his find and showed it to many villagers. Between 1977 and 1979, he sold many pieces to other collectors, and that's when he realized the true value of the artifacts. Before his mandatory military service, he buried the treasure in a wine cellar, with great hopes for the future. When the miners found him, he was four days away from his official discharge. His body hanged from two military belts, a curious detail since soldiers on the leave did not carry a spare belt. In the winter snow, three sets of footprints were found going to the cellar, but only two back to the village. Furthermore, detectives found traces of blood on Shimek's clothes. Detective Wukan also noticed a large buried pit inside the cellar, with the exact dimensions of the bronze cauldron which contained the Sousa treasure. Further investigation found out that most of the treasures were sold in Budapest in 1982, after that, the collection was in the possession of Harlem Corbin, a Lebanese art trader. He forged papers in which he localized the artifacts to Lebanon. Part of the set was then sold by the Mansur Gallery in London, where the president of Sotheby Auction House, Sir Peter Wilson, bought them. When the gallery offered to sell more pieces of the treasure, they turned to Lord Northampton for more capital. In 1984, the two noblemen offered it to sell it to the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. That's when the collection's origin started to become a problem for the Lord. You see, Arthur Hutton, an expert at Getty, was asked to inspect the objects and quickly realized that the documents which verified them were forged. 
he showed the silverwares to his old friend, Janos Györ Szilágyi, who was the head of the antique department of the Hungarian Museum of Fine Arts. He drew attention to a text present on one of the plates, which read Perso, a Latin name for Lake Balaton. This revelation, coupled with the forged documentation, made the treasure unsellable at any respectable auction house, so they were off the market until 1990, when we first started at Sotheby's. Since in their documentation they were tied to Lebanon, the Lebanese government started a lawsuit against the Sotheby's in the February of 1990 and demanded the silvers back. The Hungarian government joined the litigation in 1992, followed by Croatia in 1993, whose experts stated that the artifacts were stolen from the private collection of Joseph Broz Tito. To prove its ownership, the Hungarian state used the help of experts from the fields of archaeology, art history, chemistry and geology. Their main evidence was a quadripus, a four-leg quadron stand. It was found in Polgardi in 1878, three meters away from Shimek Sela. It has a remarkable silver purity, more than 98%, just like the objects from Seuso, and also have the same trace element distribution, and also share the same age. The very small soil sample, which the employees of Sotheby's provided, also pointed out that the silver was buried in the same kind of ground that the detectives found beside the body of Shimek. The trial took place in New York in the September of 1993, Lebanon withdrew on the very first day since they made a deal with Lord Northampton. During the trial, many of the evidence were ignored, witnesses remained unheard, so on the 4th of November, the court stated that neither the Croatian nor the Hungarian government had enough evidence to support the claims that the treasure remained in the possession of the Lord. In 2006, however, Lord Northampton tried to sell again the artifacts since the constant safekeeping of them costed him a significant financial expense, but failed again because of their doubtful origins. In 2012, the Hungarian state offered to buy back the treasure from the Lords, and in 2014, seven pieces returned to Hungary, with the other seven following in 2017. After decades, the world famous Seuso treasures can be viewed again in Hungarian hands, but the collection is far from complete. The whole set is estimated to consist around 50 different artifacts, and only time will tell when they will turn up from private treasuries. Hey, thank you for watching till the end. I know it was not my usual type of video, but I had fun making it, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Only a very small percent of you watching actually subscribe, so if you would like to see more from me, please consider subscribing, it would mean a lot to me. Until then, see you next time.